This morning, allow me to just for a few moments talk uh, to you, with you rather, um, about the scripture that has been read for your hearing. And I want to use for a theme this morning, have faith in God. Now, for those of you who had grandparents or other relatives who lived in the rural area or what we would call the country, perhaps you had the privilege to share in at least one worship experience in a sacred, sacred space whereby, Brother Perry, there was no musical instruments. It was only the sound of hand clapping and patting of the feet. Melodious chants and heartfelt a cappella praise was going on. Now, after a hard week of labor, the worship was open for those who felt the urge to share their testimony. Now, now, now someone would stand boldly and proclaim these words for those that had experienced weariness, heartbreak, physical, emotional, and mental fatigue. People of God, the words found in our text this morning are the same words chanted by, uh, by those gathered together in that tiny wooden church. Uh, these words were words of encouragement and they prompted, uh, they were prompted by the Holy Spirit to lift the countenance of those in attendance who entered the sacred space with heavy hearts, bowed heads, and broken spirit. You see, the singing of this uh, hymn, or if you will, this chant, would fill the atmosphere of that little wooden church where there were no African American heritage hymnals with the words printed on the crisp pages, but only the repetitious words imprinted or embedded in their hearts were available. You could hear them say, you could hear them say, Marsha, have faith in God. Church, have faith in God. Just have faith, have faith in God. And, and, and beloved, these words would resonate with those gathered to break away from the injustices that they had encountered. The words would go something like this, and I will not sing it, but I want you to just imagine that you can hear it. You can hear that chant with the hand clap and the patting of the feet. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith in God. Now, now I don't know, but in the country where we were from, when the testimony service was open, somebody else across the aisle would stand and they would say, this is why I have faith in God. Why? He will deliver us. He will deliver us. He will deliver us, but we must have faith, have faith, have faith in God. This little chant or hymn would minister to the people as they gather to praise and give God glory for his protection, his provision, his forgiveness, and yes, his redemption. First church as a backdrop to the text, allow me to say to us today, faith can 
and will remove the mountains of adversities in your life. As we, as we enter what is now known as Black History Month, let us remember the days of chaos and adversities when we need to be sure of our faith in God the one who has called us out of darkness to live in his marvelous light. It is imperative that we understand that faith in God is the center of our joy and the beginning of peace within and without, regardless of our brokenness. So I urge you this morning to have faith. Have faith, have faith in God because he will deliver us. Friends, one, one word from God can make a difference in the lives of his people. And the same word, that same word that was spoken then, that same word can change a nation. It can change the hearts of man. God's word is from everlasting to everlasting and it never changes. Matthew 4 and 4 states it this way, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Thus, there is nothing, nothing, and I highlight that, nothing impossible for God. All the impossibility is with, with us. When we measure God by our limited ability to believe. So faith in God is essential to our spiritual and physical health and wellness. We are kingdom children and we belong to God. Therefore, we need to build our hope on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Having faith in God is the key to building our spiritual strength. It allows us to have a healthy and a whole mindset and a pure and clean heart. God, God wants us to come confident. He wants us to, 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 to come uh, to a confident place in unwavering faith and confidence in him. God brings us into a place, into a place of perfect love and perfect faith. When we are born again in Christ Jesus, if we will just believe it and not corrupt it in our own little double minds and our little own little doubting minds and our unfaithful thoughts. First John four and five, the fifth chapter, verses four and five of the Amplified Bible puts it this way. But whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world. Even our faith. Who is it that is victorious over or that conquers, if you will, the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God and holds on to, trust in, and depend on that fact and that fact alone. Have faith in God. All of us, all of us in this worship space, those who love God want to know what his will is for our lives and how we can serve him as we serve his people. According to the Bible, people came to Jesus to ask him that very question saying, what are we to do to be working the works of God and carry out what he requires? Jesus replied, this is the work that God asks you, that you believe in the one whom he has sent, that you cleave to, that you trust in, that you rely on and have faith in his messenger. 
please know, please know that God always, always, not sometimes, he always fulfills his word. Jesus promised that through faith, his disciples, and that includes us, will accomplish wonderful things. But we must have faith in God. Children of God, I admonish you this morning to check your faith level, to check your source. If your faith is in anyone or anything else other than Christ, you have missed the mark. But today, today is the day to get on the right path to grow your faith to want to grow in your walk with Christ. And I tell you this morning, the way to do that is to have faith and complete trust and complete confidence in God, our creator. I hear Hebrews 11 and one, now faith is, is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And then 2 Peter 3 and 18 says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. And then it doesn't stop there when we have faith in God. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. And I want to repeat that because a lot of times we think it's all about us. And as one of our Sunday school attendees say, and we think we are a bag of chips and all of that. But Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not not by works, so that no one can boast. That's, that's having faith in God. That's having real faith in God, the one who saved us, the one who called us out of darkness to walk in the marvelous light. We have faith in God that he is our deliverer. We have faith in God to know that he is our healer. We have faith in God to know that he will protect us. We have faith in God to know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We have faith in God to know, children of God, that he is the one that has saved us and we did not save ourselves not by your works not by your bank account not by your 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 degree not by your status in society not by the neighborhood that you live in but by his grace his grace he says you can speak to the mountain when you have faith in him, you can speak to the mountain, the mountain of sickness, the mountain of debt, the mountain of adversities, the mountains of injustice, the mountains of, of fear, the mountains of worry, the mountains that keep you oppressed and depressed. I tell you, God is a good God. First Peter Two and the second chapter, verses two through three says this. When you have faith, like newborn babes crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tested, tasted rather, and the Lord is good, then you must have faith. Have faith. Have faith in God. Second Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we live by faith and not by sight. We live by faith and not by sight. I encourage you this morning that if you have any notion 
that you are trusting in something or someone else other than Jesus Christ, our Lord. Ask Holy Spirit to enlighten you so that you will know that your trust has been misplaced. God is waiting. His arms are stretched wide open. He's waiting. He wants us to come to him pure. He wants us to come to him asking for forgiveness. He wants us to come to him trusting that he will not leave us. So this morning I ask, I ask as we celebrate black history, and I ask that we not let this just be a, a, a month celebration, but that the spirit of the Lord would pour into us a desire to walk by faith and not by sight. He will pour into us a reason that we celebrate. He will pour into us the goodness of God, he will pour into us and let us know, look where he brought us from. Just look where he has brought us from. He has brought us out of darkness to walk in the marvelous light. Look where he has brought us from. So I encourage you this morning, have faith. Have faith. Have faith in God. Why, Dorinda? Because he will deliver us. He will keep us from falling. He will heal our broken and wounded spirit. He will keep us together in unity, but we must have faith and have faith in God and know that he will never, ever, never give up on us. So we grow in our walk with him and we trust God and we trust him alone and have faith in God. How do we do that? In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. So we must have faith in the word of God. Amen, amen, and amen.